Okay, welcome back to TSP. If you're new to the channel, I just wanted to thank you for joining us. Uh, today's video is going to be about the joys of being a homeowner. Um, I'm going to say a little over two weeks ago, I started to have some problems with my uh, septic system. Uh, the, the water in the drains and the toilets and everything wasn't going down. You flush the toilet and everything would gurgle all through the you, you know, you can hear it in the drains all through the house. Uh, so basically when that happens, there's only one thing you can do, and that's pump your system. Uh, after a couple days of trying other things to see if I can get it to, to I, I thought maybe it could have been clogged too, but I tried some things and I came to the conclusion it needed to be pumped. So, <sighs> we get it pumped, still, the, the water and the drains and the toilets and everything still wouldn't go down. So that tells you there's a problem somewhere from the tank in the house. Could be under the floors in the house, could be right where it comes out. I don't know. So we're spraying the hose down there. We're trying to get everything loosened up. Couldn't get it. I mean, we got from where the, the, the lines that come up out of the ground, there's like a clean out trap there. We uh, clean that out from there so the tank was good so the problem was from there somewhere else long story short <clears throat> i'm not going to mention uh, the guy's name that came and uh, did the work for us i never talked to him about uh, mentioning his name on the channel so i didn't want to i didn't want to do that uh, but anyway he said to me he said well i can come back he's like i need to dump this tank he's like, i can come back with the snake unless you know someone that has one and at the time i didn't i was like i I mean, I, I have a little one, but it's not a good quality one. So I was like, no, I said, you might as well come back. So two hours later, he comes back. Just when it gets dark, it starts to rain, and we're out there trying to snake the drain. He could only get it to go, he said, five feet from where we put in. When it, when it, goes, when it goes down, he got it to go into the line, and then I think it takes a hard turn like this up into the house. Hey, there she is. But what we were thinking was, since that line is getting backed up, it's possible that the contractor that did this, who, don't even get me started on that guy. That guy is a piece of work. Let's just say that. Um, if anybody is interested in this local area that wants to know who to stay away from, I'll tell you in the comments section. But anyway, we think that it's possible that he did not put the line in correctly and, and put gravel underneath and stamp it down um, to make it solid. And we think that maybe when he just threw the lines in, it, uh, it rested and it, it, the line might have got a bow in it. And if that's the case, we're going to have to dig it up and redo it this summer, possibly this summer. The guy that pumped it out, he said, you might be able to get another two or three years out of it. Who wants to wait that long and see, you know, in the middle of winter like this, I literally had to go out. I could show you the uh, the lid. The way the lid was, it was um, pretty much under dirt, right where the bolts are. So I had to go out there, frozen ground, with uh, a hammer and a chisel, and just chisel away at all that dirt and, and dig, dig, dig until I finally got everything all the way down. So as soon as I got that all dug out, I called them. They came. They came. I think they were here in, within like a half an hour, 45 minutes. So that was pretty awesome. Uh, but anyway, so. He can only get the snake in, that's where I was, I remember now. He can only get the snake in to where that, that line bent, and he couldn't get it to, to curve. He just couldn't get it to bend. It, it would only go so far, and then it would like almost get tangled up, and almost ripped his, caught his glove a couple times, almost ripped his hand off. So we're, we're doing this for I don't even know how long, and he's getting frustrated, and we're like, you know, I don't, we don't think it's going to work. It's not going to, we can't get it up in there. And uh, all of a sudden, whoosh. Everything released, everything flushed, everything went through. So then, fast forward a week, and actually before that, before we even started to have a problem, we noticed that our electric bill was, I believe, like $300 two months ago. Last month, another $300 bill. We couldn't figure out what the heck was going on. We went around and, and cleaned all of, all, all of our appliances. We pulled the refrigerators out, vacuumed around everything. We thought maybe things were, I mean, we've only been living here since may of 2018 so i didn't think it'd be that bad and it wasn't it wasn't bad we cleaned out everything and uh i went through and made sure there wasn't a whole bunch of unnecessary things plugged in then i realized 
what was drawing so much power. So then fast forward to a week later and I'm in the shower. I just got done rinsing the soap out of my hair. Water shuts off. And I'm thinking, oh no, did the pump just go? I'll be honest with you, I didn't record any of this while everything was happening because at the time I was, I was pretty upset with, with how almost everything just starts failing. And like I said, we haven't been living here long. Now that contract that I was telling you about, he reused a lot of that stuff like that well, the well pressure tank, reuse that, who knows how old it was. Uh, but anyway, I didn't know if it was the pump, I didn't know what was going on. So I was upset about it at first, but then I like to take stuff like this as a learning experience. I grew up in a very small town, we had city water. Uh, when I was a kid, we had a septic tank, but then we ended up eventually, I think I was a teenager at some point, we ended up having to uh, tap into the uh, city sewage. Uh, so I never had to worry about, my parents never had to worry about the septic while I was old enough to remember it, basically. This stuff is all new to me. You know, I never had a well before, um, so I, I've learned a lot about that. So I've used these things as a learning experience. My wife and I immediately, most of the time, I don't know where she found her info. I usually go to YouTube because there's a lot of professionals out there who are kind enough to uh, teach people how, how they do things. And if it wasn't for that, you know... My dad never really had to work with pumps and stuff like that and uh, well systems, so. Back. Like I was saying, my dad never really had to deal with this kind of stuff, so I can't ask him. Um, my wife's dad, he passed away seven, eight years ago now. So I don't really have anybody that I can turn to and say, hey, this is what's going on, what do I do? So I did my research on YouTube. Uh, my wife is doing a lot of research and she said she she came across i was actually learning the whole process of the well and the pump and and pulling it out and all, all the stuff that you have to do i wanted to start from the beginning and learn everything my wife she found something that they said just take a screwdriver the handle of the screwdriver and tap your switch take the cover off tap your switch if it kicks on chances are you've got a problem with your switch the uh the contacts or dirty or they're just getting worn down because like I said everything was reused that switch who knows how old that switch was and they're not they're not expensive they're they're pretty cheap I think the one I got down at my local hardware store um, I believe it was 13 bucks 13 or 14 bucks um, and then my gauge on it also was not working it was stuck like at 60 I got one of those two and it was only four bucks and I thought you know I better make sure this whole system's good. And when I went to check the pressure in the tank, water was coming out of the out of that pressure valve. And you know, just like on your t car tires, uh, water's not supposed to come out of those. So if you ever have a situation like this and water comes out, then your bladder's bad. Um, so I looked into the bladders, and I actually I could have just replaced the bladder for like 180 bucks, 150 to 100 uh, to 200 is probably the range in there. Since we completely remodeled the house. And then we put that trailer in the back of my property for my mom. We have way more uh, water fixtures, you know, the, a lot more toilets, a lot more sinks. The general rule of thumb is, you know, count your toilets, your sinks, your uh, bathtub showers, your outside uh, uh, hose bib. Uh, you're supposed to count all that stuff, multiply by three. You should, that should give you the um, approximate gallon tank you need for your pressure tank. Uh, the one that I have in the basement, you'll see that it was a 19.8 gallon, way too small. It might have been good for the, the original house, that, that pump wasn't running long enough. What you want is for the pump to run when it kicks on, to run for at least a minute before it kicks off. And then the bigger the tank, it'll be a lot slower till it gets to that uh, kick in pressure of 30, 40, whatever you have it set at. So that's, that's the way you want your pressure system to run. I did not know any of that whenever, before I bought this place. What I ended up doing, uh, I looked into you know, the best quality well pressure tanks. And Amtrol, the company Amtrol, uh, has been making these pressure tanks for 45 plus years. And those tanks, they are kind of pricey, especially when you get up into the bigger size tanks. Then uh, my wife found the generic brand, it's made by the same company, but it's generic 
They call it generic because it's uh, basically the material that they use. The, the diaphragm on the inside of the tank is the exact same as the expensive ones, but the, uh, the gauge metal that they use on the actual tank itself is a thinner gauge, uh, which that really shouldn't matter because the water doesn't touch those tanks anyway. That's just for strength. And um, steel over fiberglass, obviously steel is going to be stronger. And that's my fiberglass was what my uh, well mate was. Uh, so I decided to go with the generic brand because all the local places like Home Depot and Lowe's, that's the water worker is the, is the brand name and that's what they carried. I did a lot of research and saw that the reviews on these tanks, they were getting, people were getting their tanks. The box that it came in was perfectly fine, but they had big dents on the top. So that's a, sh that's a shipping issue. They're, they're denting these things before they even put them in the box. So I decided I was gonna go to Home Depot and pick up one of these water worker tanks. Um, and then I thought, I thought my wife read the reviews on that. I didn't really read a whole lot of reviews on the water worker tank, but when I got there, <clears throat> found it, I thought, you know, just, I just wanna see what the reviews are. Pulled out my phone, checked, and a lot of people were saying that the elbow that they use underneath the tank, it's just a regular steel elbow. And some people, they complained about uh, the elbow. Hold on, I'll show you. All right, when water touches this, it's instantly gonna start rusting. Uh, you're not gonna get longevity out of this kind of an elbow. That is why they were charging so little for these tanks compared to the other ones. The material they're using, in my opinion, is junk. So I took this one off and gave it, after closer inspection, you can actually see, that might be a good shot right there, you can actually see that it's already starting to rust and it's not even in use yet. So I took this off and I ordered uh, a brass. It's either stainless or brass. So I ordered brass and this is another thing that I did not realize. If you take a tape measure, this is how I tried to decide what, what size I needed. Take a tape measure and you and you measure from right, right just from thread to thread or maybe even go into the threads a little bit just because you know obviously uh, the male end of the threads is going to be a little bit bigger than the inside diameter of this um, but if you take a tape measure across there this was actually an inch and a half but it's actually according to them inch and a quarter and that completely blew my mind i don't understand I don't know how they how they come up with their sizes. To be honest with you, if anybody out there knows that, the answer to that, please let me know. Because I ordered a brass elbow. I ordered, that was an inch and a half, and then I got uh, a reducer, inch and a half to inch and a quarter reducer. The stuff that I ordered was way too big. Why do they have to make it so difficult? Can anybody answer me that? Why do they have to make it so difficult? I don't know how. So basically, whatever you measure it to be, subtract a quarter of an inch. And then another thing, the, the first thing I noticed when I opened the box, the tank is wrapped in plastic and tied off. And it, it's like they just put it in plastic, put it in a box, taped it, shipped it. No styrofoam around it whatsoever to protect this. So when I get it out, I mean, it's like bouncing around in the box whenever I'm trying to load it onto the truck and everything. I'm like, I'm like what's up with that? It's, it's bound, you know, it's a pressurized tank. It should be protected, right? You would think. So I get it out, <clears throat> I take the plastic off, I look at the bottom of it and the blue paint around that uh, bottom flange is already completely starting to peel off. And the top part, which I'll show you, there's like a little black cap. Um, it's not the pressure, the valve, the pressure valve's over here, but the little black cap, I took that off and the paint's already chipping off of that. So I brought it into my garage, cleaned it all up, repainted everything with that uh it's like a rubberized uh, truck bed coating so i gave it like three coats of that stuff and a clear coat and uh so now i'm letting it dry and since i had to send all those parts back that i ordered uh, i got a pressure relief valve too contractor never put a pressure relief valve in there um, i ordered that i ordered a shut off because he never put where my main water line comes into the house there's no shut off on that there's two shut offs behind my tank and the uh, T-pipe and before it gets to, well, there's one before it gets to my uh, filter and UV light, there's a shut off there. And then on the other side of the UV light, 
there's another shut off. So I do have shut offs down in the basement, but I don't have one on the main before it gets to my tank. Let me show you what I did so far. <clears throat> Okay, so you can see here, I, got, I used the plastic that it came with just to, I didn't want to get paint all over the whole thing. So I just painted that flange that they have flared out because this is what's going to be sitting on the ground. And that should, that should give it a lot more protection that was, than was on it. But uh, that's where the elbow was. And I took it, I have duct tape on it now so I didn't get paint in the threads. So I gave it a good coating of paint, which... Personally, I don't think I should have to do that. I think they need to do a better job with their tanks, to be honest with you. I'm really not happy with that. But there's the, this black cap right here. Let's see if I can get it off. It's... So here's your pressure valve right here. And then uh, this, I'll be honest with you, I don't even know what this is. But it, the paint was chipping on that too. So like I said, water worker, 44 gallon. I do think that now that uh, once I get all this stuff on it, I think it's going to be pretty good. The parts are going to be coming tomorrow. I'll just I'll probably just show you the after the after stuff because be honest with you, there are a ton of videos out there with these kind of pressure tanks and how to hook them up and learn anything you need to from the professionals. I'm not a professional. I'm just a DIYer. You know, I really I take pride in, in being able to figure things out and do stuff on my own that way. If I ever have an emergency, I can do it myself. And, and with the price of things today, it's just it's ridiculous. I'm not, I, I'd really rather not pay someone else a ridiculous amount of money to do something that I can perfectly, that I can do perfectly fine myself. So stay tuned and uh, I'll show you everything that I do. And if there's any questions that you guys have, I mean, feel free to ask because maybe if you have any advice, uh, any questions, I mean, we can learn, we can learn this stuff together. Oops, oh no! I, I dropped your little guy. Hi, buddy. Oh, you keep throwing that out. Hi, Gabe. Hi, how you doing? Everybody say hello to Gabe. He is my uh, one and only nephew. I have a whole bunch of nieces. Can I pull your hood back? Hi. This little guy is my little buddy, huh? You my little buddy. <laughs> Boop. Hi. Boop. All right, you guys. So the parts just came about a half hour ago. Uh, I did not expect them to be this early. They came about 10:30 this morning. Uh, it's about a little after 11 now. So <clears throat> we're gonna switch out my pressure tank. So let's get started. Uh, like I said, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to show you guys every little detail that I'm going to do here. Uh, there's, like I said, there's a ton of videos out there done by professionals. Um, so, like I said, I'll, I'll show you my system and then I'll show you the after. So here's the, it's a Wellmate pressure tank. It's a 19.8 gallon. I just replaced my switch the other, uh, about a week ago or so. Uh, and then I had to replace my gauge because it was not working properly either. And like I said, this is where the pressure relief valve should be. I'm just going to take everything apart, clean it. I am going to put a shutoff valve right in here somewhere. Like I said, I have one here before it gets to the filter and then goes through the UV light. And then I have another one right up there. So I do have them on this side, but not on this side of the tank. So I'm going to put one there. That's my main water line coming into the house. Checking back in. I know I said I wasn't going to do this until after and then I was going to show you everything that I did but like I said I just I just want to make sure that uh, if anybody else has this problem I want to help you out so I loosened this up water only came out so far I put I pushed the valve needle in and on the top of the tank there it was only releasing so much water actually what I ended up doing was uh, I kind of hand tightened this back up this gauge here and I put air back in the tank left this valve open while I could hear water running out of it. Sounds like it stopped right now. So I'm going to try to put some more air in. Actually, yeah, it's, it's a little bit lighter, but there's still a lot of water in it. So I'm going to try and do that process again and uh, try to get some more water out of it. Because if, if I take this out completely, water just pours out of it.
Okay, like I said, I know I wasn't going to show you like all the steps, which I'm not I'm still not going to. Just I just want to show you guys like I said before. I'm having a little problem here cuz if you watch all those videos like I've seen before of the professionals doing it, they say turn your pump off. Open your valve to release the uh, water out of your tank. And then it's empty. Well, that's in the perfect world. In my world, you release you you open the valve and some of the water drains you still have water in your tank because the uh, bladder failed. So what I did find is what I'm doing it is working. I loosened up my uh, switch, I loosened up my gauge that way the air has somewhere to go and, uh, and then I'm putting more air into the tank and that is pushing all this water out and it's so much lighter now I can definitely pick that up no problem. So like I said if my if my issues that I'm finding, that I'm coming across, can help anybody else out, then, then this video is worth making. I took the T-pipe off and got all those fittings and everything taken off. Everything that was metal or brass, I soaked it in the uh, vinegar and salt. And I'll tell you what, I didn't even have to scrub on it and it already got shiny. Look at this. Look how shiny that is already. I gotta, I gotta scrub on those threads a little bit better. But look how shiny that is. Bye bye mold. That's gonna be in good shape. I can reuse that. There's nothing corroded on it. This is where the uh, that red PEX was connected to. It's in good shape. Nothing rusted or corroded. These are my new parts. This is the the brass fitting that I'm going to replace, that metal one that I took off the tank, that's an uh, inch and a quarter, and then an inch and a quarter to one inch reducer. And then, because that's what this is, the ends of these are one inch. And that one. Those are one inch. These, I believe, are a quarter. Those are half inch on the front there. Okay, now uh, let's go get the tank. All right, guys, so here's the new system. Like I said, it's a water worker tank, 44 gallon, so it's a little more than double what I had before. As you can see, that's the size of the little guy. I, sh I should put that next to that one just to give you a side-by-side -side comparison. All right, so that's the old one. Here's the new one. I did run into a couple more problems. So the uh, this, this bar here underneath the switch, I'll show you the original. This is the original, you can see how long it is, and when we when we tried to put that on there, the switch was actually hitting the tank up here, the part that comes out right there. So I went down to the hardware store, luckily they had like a two inch one, and I put that one in. Uh, everything fits, I had to take this back off though to get this to spin on. I put that back on, clamped, uh, one thing I did do, I, I added a shut off valve on my main, like I said. And I had to get a new PEX because the other one wasn't long enough. Alright, we're ready to turn it on and try it out and see how it goes. Okay, so I do have a leak. This one here is just a plastic elbow, so i got to screw this in a little bit more. And uh, then I'll check in. Okay, let's see how it does. I just uh, gave this one full turn. I had to take this all off again. Now I'm going to... Slowly crack this. Oop. Let it fill up. Hopefully no leaks. Nice and slow. I'll check back in because it's probably going to take a little while for that to fill up. Yeah, it's holding steady at 38 pounds because that's what the tank is set at, 38. So once that water fills this tank up, and it starts putting pressure on that compressed air at the top, then it'll start going up higher. All right, it's just kicked off at 60, and it is holding pressure. It, is, it did not drop at all, exactly where you want it. Go ahead and turn the faucet on up there. That is working as it should, because look at that. We got the water running up there, and it is barely moving. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. I'm just curious to see how long that pump runs when it kicks on, because it's supposed to be at least a minute that you want when this switch kicks on to turn that pump on in your well, you you want it to run for at least a minute, they say. That way you get the you don't burn your pump up. 
All right, so we'll, I'll check back in with you once it gets down to 40. Okay, click on at 40. Okay, about 30 seconds into it and it's halfway. Over a minute. All right, so that went from 40 to 60, about what, 60, 61. In a little bit over a minute, so that's perfect. Everything's working as it should. All right, guys and girls, so just to wrap this video up real quick, um, when I finished this up, I was cleaning up all my tolls and I noticed that behind the tank there, it was a little wet. So I did have a one leak right where the reducer screws into the elbow. Just tighten that down and everything's good to go now. The, pre the system is working as it should. And I'll tell you what, I wish I would have done this a long time ago. I feel like I'm gonna have a lot of repairs to do over the years that uh, my so-called contractor basically failed us on. So I'll be bringing you guys along on the journey with that. Uh, and also one other thing that I wanted to talk about real quick. So in celebration of our 100 subscribers, which thank you guys so much for that. Uh, you have no idea how much I appreciate that. Um, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. Uh, in my next video, I'm gonna talk about some things that when I was younger, I decided I wasn't gonna talk to people about it because I thought, I figured they probably thought I was nuts. Um, I did attempt to talk about it one time with my uncle and he looked at me like I had two heads. So I thought maybe I shouldn't be talking to people about this. So I kept it to myself, but you know what? I'm old enough now, I really don't care what other people think. And uh, so I'm gonna share that story with you on my next video. Uh, it's actually two separate things completely opposite but somewhat similar if you want to know what i'm talking about you'll just have to tune in to the next video i appreciate every single one of you guys tagging along and uh i'll see you guys on the next video